I believe what Daniel Jones showed us yesterday was this. I'm the franchise quarterback of the New York Giants. Pay me my money. You made me bet on myself. Well, guess what? I won that bet. Just minutes before the NFL franchise tag deadline yesterday, March 7th, 2023, Daniel Jones and the New York Giants came to a four-year contract extension and preserving the franchise tag for Saquon Barkley. This was the literal best case scenario for Brian Dable and Joe Shane as the New York Giants as a team, preserving their two young studs, their dynamic duo, and Daniel Jones and Saquon Barkley for a combined total of $29.1 million on the 2023 team salary cap. This gives them plenty of space for their draft, their free agency, and to bolster up the roster in areas where it was definitely weak while preserving the core of this team. Keeping Saquon and DJ in town together for at least one more year as a tandem in New York was imperative for Shane and Dable. This offense literally and figuratively ran through them last season. They were the number six team overall in rushing yards per game, and the offense leaned heavily on the run due to the lack of production and the lack of personnel in the wide receiving core for the New York Giants last season. Here's a quick look at Daniel Jones' 2022 season stats. 3,205 passing yards, 15 passing touchdowns to 5 interceptions. A little low, but a 3 to 1 touchdown to interception ratio is fantastic. And it means Daniel Jones is only ascending upwards in the right direction. So not only has Daniel Jones developed his rushing ability, his passing game has only improved with an increased completion percentage and quarterback rating throughout his career, but he's also among some of the top quarterbacks in the NFL in terms of expected points added on any play when he's outside of the pocket. He makes it happen regardless of the situation behind the line. The highest yards per game that a wide receiver averaged for the New York Giants in 2022 was Sterling Shepard with only 51.3 receiving yards per game given he missed most of the season with a torn ACL. As you can see, nobody averaged many yards per game because Jones was a distributor of the ball. Darius Slayton was the most stable wide receiver in this receiving core, but he only averaged 45.3 yards per game. This was because the New York Giants offense didn't really have a true alpha and they were distributing the ball to whoever suited up. And the New York Giants and Brian Dable just understanding that the only way this team can consistently put up yards and win games of football is by running the ball. And then you have plenty of practice squad names that you may or may not even heard of as Richie James, Marcus Johnson, and others. Kenny Galladay overpaid and uninterested and was unable to even fight his way onto the field due to a poor work ethic and some injuries lingering. The only real bright spot from this wide receiving core last season was Isaiah Hodgins, a practice squatter from the Buffalo Bills who really shined in the second half of the year, really synergizing with Daniel Jones down the stretch, especially in the red zone. He's a big body receiver, filling in for the role that Kenny Galladay was unable to fill for in New York. He is a bright spot moving forward, and he is already signed to the team for 2023. The last thing I would like to look over before closing out this one here is just some of the details regarding Daniel Jones's contract. So if you guys have any questions about it, I'll actually link this article in the description. I would recommend pausing this because I will be putting it down so we can watch some of the highlights while we discuss this. But this is how Daniel Jones's money is spread out throughout his contract. He gets a lot of it straight up from signing. Then the first year, it's only a small cap hit. And then 2024, there's definitely a bigger cap hit there. But a lot of his money is backloaded to that 2026 base salary of $46 million, which is non-guaranteed. The non-guaranteed is the most important part because it makes it a lot easier for us to cut ties with Daniel Jones later on if he isn't going to work out as I believe he will and it will be not as large of a dead hit financially for the New York Giants. And as you can see down below here, I'll bring it up again real quick, he has a ton of money and incentives that he can earn just from playing to the level that he already proved that he could play at and then some. This contract negotiation was a win-win for Daniel Jones and the New York Giants. Daniel Jones gets exactly what he wants, finally some stability in his career with coaching staff and even his own future, having that certainty he'll at least be locked up for a few more years, and he gets that money straight up, whereas Joe Shane and Brian Dable get the much needed salary cap flexibility in order to continue growing this roster. It's an exciting time to be a fan of the New York football giants. Thank you, Joe Shane. That quarterback played good. Mm. Mm. You want to say anything, Daniel? Appreciate everybody. Bring it up. Bring it up. See everybody on Wednesday. Giants on three. One, two, three. Wait, wait. All right.
Daniels right. See you Wednesday. Yeah.